Welcome back to Little Miffa Classic, and we're here with the daily driven 1975 XJ6, which sadly is not being daily driven at the moment, but that is something I want to work on because I miss driving this car. Absolutely love it. And I do have some things in the mail which should arrive today, which probably will help it. I really hope so, like we discussed in the previous video. Uh, but I don't know. It says it's supposed to arrive today, but you never know. It could be another week. So I went out and bought something I've wanted for a long time, which is a tester so we can pressurize the coolant system and see if we can figure out where it is leaking. So this car is losing coolant and I believe it's consuming it because we saw some in cylinder number two. However, it doesn't have to be the head gasket because I can no longer detect any hydrocarbons in the coolant or at least the last time I tried. So it may be something else. It may be that it's just you know sucking it in, but more likely if it's consuming coolant in, there's so much pressure in the cylinder compared to the coolant system, it's gonna push exhaust fluid into the coolant or exhaust fumes into the coolant. And that is not happening, I think, at the moment. So the other thing could be the intake manifold. It could be leaking somewhere. There are coolant passages in there. It could also be cracked inside. So I thought we'd pressurize the coolant system and see if we can figure out where it's leaking. I've already taken some things apart here and I found a little bit of water in the rear carb. So let's have a look at that. So I've just taken the tops of the SU carbs off. Remember, every single time you do something like this, don't mix them up. So I know that these are for the rear and those are for the front. You don't want to mess them up. Uh, if you do, you will have to most likely perform the drop test, which I have a video on. You can check my playlist for SU carb videos if you want to know how to perform that because they are machined to match each of them. So that is very important. But I'm going to see if I can show you what I found with a little flashlight here. So if you can see right down there, there are some water particles and this might actually be easier without the flashlight let's see or if I can change the flashlight like this for a bit and try and put the camera all the way down there and I have no idea if I can even show this on camera but at least I'm going to try behind the throttle there let's try again like this So yeah, behind there, there is some water standing on that carb, and there isn't on that side, which corresponds with coolant in cylinder number two, which is right over here. So maybe there is a leak coming from the intake manifold. There would be two ways, of course, because there is water in this inlet manifold. That's where the thermostat house is. So there are intake ports and coolant ports right next to each other. I have a spare manifold we can have a look at afterwards so I can show you what that looks like, how close those ports actually are. So let's say that this surface is not perfectly square. This could have gotten warped. Even if I put a good new gasket on there and everything, there could be a slight leak between there. There could also be an internal crack, of course, in this manifold. Or just, you know, corrosion and it's worn away and gotten a little bit porous. So I think that what we're going to do is fill up the coolant again to the maximum in here. Make sure there's some in the coolant reservoir. And then we're going to get my new tester. We'll pump it up to, um, I think this system is about 16 pounds on that cap. We will pump it up to that and then have a look if I can see any more in here. Wipe it clean first with a paper towel. And we're going to see if anything comes back. It might need to sit for a while. If I don't see anything in here... We can have a look inside cylinder number two with my little boroscope camera and maybe we'll see something in there. But uh, let me get that new tester out and show you guys how it works. Okay, I'm going to start by opening up here. So if there's any pressure left in the system, I'll let that out. And there is none. And we'll open up here as well. And we're down a little bit of coolant there. So I'm going to fill that up. Like we talked about in the last video, I'm just putting straight water in here for now because all of this is coming out as soon, uh, yeah, in a couple weeks or so, I'm going to flush the system anyways. So no point in putting any coolant in. Okay, 
pour it up to the top there and we'll fill up some in here as well All right, that's all I got. So that seems to be good enough. And this thing was not full, if you're wondering. This would be three liters if it's full. So uh, maybe two liters or so I put in right now. So I'll put the flat cap back on here. And make sure that's pretty tight. Then let me show you my new tester. So it's part of a big test kit with lots of adapters. You can work on pretty much every single vehicle. So this is the cap I'm going to use. So you see it's the right size, the other one, and on here it says, yeah, 16 PSI. So this has a fitting with it that you hook this up and it's a tiny little vacuum pump here. You can see, and you can pump that up to whichever desired vacuum you want. And you can you know, check for leaks, or not vacuum pressure, I mean. And we can check for leaks and also see if it holds pressure, which it should. So we'll put this on. Okay. That clicks into place. And I'm going to come over on the other side so you can see the dial while I'm pumping that up. I think you can sort of see that there. So. It's building pressure. But I think we'll go up to full system pressure, which is 16 PSI. Not 16. And we're holding so far. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's holding at 16. So I think we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. I'm gonna clean off in here so it looks nice and clean. And I'm gonna try and look inside there with a flashlight and I'll report back if I find anything. It's been about 10 minutes and it is going down slowly. I mean, it's at 16, it's at 14 now. And I haven't seen anything in here. And I'm not sure how clear I was before. I mean, there wasn't like water standing there, but I could see some droplets on the back there. So I decided to pull the spark plugs. And the last couple of times, I mean, I've just moved this car briefly. It's running on the AED mostly. So I expect them to be rich and they're all black. And the funny thing is that they're all even as well. So when I looked at that, but okay, that doesn't look like one of the cylinders is consuming coolant. However, I hope that you can see that in there. In cylinder number two, where I have a flashlight, I hope you can see. There is a lot of liquid moving around in there and the other ones are completely dry. Like they should be. But there is a lot of liquid moving around. So definitely the issue is like we thought before when we saw the borescope, it's definitely going at cylinder two from a coolant passage or a crack somewhere or a porous liner or a porous head or something like that. So I think I'm going to use a suction uh, just device or something to suck it up, see if we can have a look at what that looks like. And... Um, yeah, really, really not that great, but it's not worse than before. And like I said, we're going to try a retorque, flush out the coolant system, and we're going to try a case seal. Just because it seems to be a very, very small leak. Like this, it mostly leaks when the car is sitting, or right now when I just put a bunch of pressure into it while it was sitting. So uh, I'll go get that thing. 
see if we can suck some of that out and see what it looks like. I got this big syringe here and a water bottle. So let's see if we can figure out what is in there. Well, yeah, no doubt about it. It's cool, but my syringe is not really working the way I want it to. Okay. okay. Well, I need a new syringe, but uh, that's coolant. So this is how much I got out. So that's not good at all. It's amazing this thing actually never like hydro locked or anything like that. But I'm guessing the pressure in the system, I mean 60 PSI is the max. So I'm guessing it's probably not as high when the engine's actually running and hot, you know, when you turn it off. But uh, yeah, that was quite a bit. Let me see if I can still see any coolant down in there. I can see the top of the piston now. But I think what I will still do is definitely gonna leave the caps off so there's no pressure in the system. And I'm just gonna hot wire the starter here and we'll shoot any remaining coolant out of the cylinder so it doesn't sit in there. And then I will spray in some WD-40 now, which I've done the other times I've run this engine just so, um, you know, minimize the amount of rust in that bore. I mean, this is definitely, definitely not good. But like I said, we're not giving up. We're gonna try case seal, like I said, see what happens. Because when I drive this thing normally, it uses a tiny amount of coolant. I mean, it's less than that. So this was probably just a good extreme test. But now I know that I have one of those pressure testers, it works. And that is gonna be a good thing for finding leaks, especially on V12 hoses and things like that, finding leaks. That would be an excellent tool. But I think I'll put the tops of the carbs back on and a few other things. And then when you're when you're back, we'll spin the engine over and probably have some coolant left over there. Shoot up. And I'll go get some WD-40 as well. Top of the carbs are back on. I've depressurized the coolant system and I grabbed a little jumper cable. I keep one of these in all my cars. Just a piece of cable that I can jump. This is great if you have, you know, a fuel pump that goes bad, you can jump a relay, I mean a fuel pump relay, or if something happens with your inhibitor switch or anything, you can jump things. And that is always a good thing. So let's see. This one is the main cable going down to the starter. And we're going to double check that we are in park. Yes, we are. So just going to connect that there and then jump it off the positive over here. Let me see, on the battery, through here. So keep an eye here if we see any coolant shoot out. All right, we got a little bit shooting out, that's good. And yeah, it's turning off over weirdly because I got three spark plugs out, but got no fuel on and no ignition. So we do it one more time just to get anything out of there. All right, so that is really good. But I think one more thing we can actually try now is let's pressurize the fuel system, the, uh, not the fuel system. Let's pressurize the coolant system again and wait another 10 seconds or 10 minutes. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Wait another 10 minutes and see how much coolant I actually get in there. So then we can sort of evaluate how big the leak is because I don't know if there was coolant in there before from this thing sitting from the last time I ran it. But uh, yeah, let's try that and I'll pressure it all back up and we'll be back in 10 minutes. While we wait for those 10 minutes to go by, I went to check the mailbox and this arrived. You should cover up my address. But this is basically paying import duties on anything outside the EU. So the stuff came from the UK. So 
So it's kind of ridiculous. It's 50 euros worth of stuff. And let me see. Um, now I have to pay another 15 euros to get it to my house. So that is, um, that is the case of ordering stuff. That's what happens. And I decided to pick up this head gasket as well. Or this is the, I mean, I decided to go and get this old head gasket. Not sure what's going on today. I can't really talk. So this is the one I took off the last time I had it. This is the orientation. And this is what we're interested in. I've turned it around. So here is cylinder two. And if you can see, we got coolant here. So this is you know, the slots between the liners. And if you can see, that is a tiny amount that that needs to seal. So my educated guess that if it is not a crack or drop liner or anything like that, that is probably where we're leaking. It's probably fine when everything is, you know, new and all torqued down. But after a couple of heat cycles, I think I start to get a leak right there. All the other ones are pretty much fine. Looks kind of tight over there as well, but that's not leaking. That looks very tight, but that's not leaking. But for some reason, we will only have coolant in cylinder two. So, uh, yeah, that is what is going on. And after this was removed, the head was skimmed once more. And everything else was checked. The top of it looks pretty much fine. I mean, it looks a little dark right there, but I don't think anything has gone past there. This has also just been laying on a shelf in my barn for uh, like six months or so now, longer. So um, it's not fresh off the car, but that is at least an issue, I think, with the block here. That uh, There has been some corrosion in there, so this is not supposed to be as thick as it is. And that's definitely causing a sealant issue. But uh, let's check on the pressure and I'll check on the time as well. And... Well, before that, let's see if we can actually see anything down there. Okay, I am not seeing anything at all like before, so that's good. So, the leak is probably not that big, I hope, because that was probably just it leaking in from sitting for a couple weeks after I warmed this thing up, or two weeks or something like that. So, um... That would have been a lot from 10 minutes. But I'll wait another couple more minutes and we'll see if we can actually see how much is in there. Otherwise, I think we just have to crank it over, see how much sore squirts out and sort of determine if it's a lot or a little. It's been about 15 minutes now instead. And I am not sure how this will show up on camera, but it's definitely not like before. Before it was really covering the top of the piston. Now it's just a tiny, tiny bit on the side I can see there. So. The leak is definitely, there is a leak, but it's definitely not as massive as I thought it was before. But I'm going to depressurize that again. And for fun, let's just, uh, well, not only just for fun, but we're going to turn the engine over, get all of that out of there. And then I have some WD-40 we're going to spray in there. Because as you may know, WD-40 stands for Water Displacement Formula 40. So it's meant to repel water, which it does very well. So that's what we're going to use it for, but uh, let's see how much is actually in there. The same as before, got the jumper on, and let's see how much actually comes out of there. Actually just a tiny, tiny amount. There's pretty much nothing in there at all. So that indicates that it is a very small leak and stuff that leaked in there that could have been over, you know, a couple of weeks. We got WD-40 here. I lost the straw like you always do. And let's see if I can fog that in there as much as possible. And I really just want to get a lot in there. And I think I'm going to set up my jumper again and turn it over to get some of that to go up and down the bore a bit and then we'll fill it up again. As you can see, way more shot up now than before. So that really means that there was not a lot of coolant in there at all. But let's 
Alright, let's spray that in there. Alright, put the spark plugs back in, make sure there's no pressure in the cooling system, and now this thing can sit, waiting for the next step, which will be flushing out the cooling system, retorquing down the head, and we're going to try case seal. And that's it for this video. I just paid for those import duties, so that means it usually arrives within a week, hopefully less, but as soon as it arrives uh, and I get a chance, I will flush out the cooling system, just like we said, get all that old stuff out of there. I'll fill up with distilled water because it's summer here and I don't want to waste money on coolant if this is not going to work at all. We'll try case seal and see how it goes. I mean, when the video when I announced I wanted to try it because I got recommended by an XK engine expert who said that when you have such a small leak, I think I should try it. And I just heard stories from you guys, lots of people who had tried it and been successful. So that is great news. I think the reason I'm having a little bit of issue sort of communicating or talking, which I'm sorry about during this video, is just I think my nerves are starting to get to me. My wife is uh, expecting our next baby any any day now. And um, you know, trying to stay calm, of course, but I think my nerves are starting to get to me. So that's also one thing to know that if I do miss an upload or something, that's what's going on. It's because we're off um, having a baby and I'm hoping that everything goes well. I will do a little update, this little thing, making sure that everything has gone well. But if you don't hear from me for a video, so you know that, you know, family is just, family is very important and we probably just need some time together with the new child. But fingers crossed, everything goes really well. And fingers crossed, everything goes well with this XK engine here. So I hope you guys liked this video and that you liked that I was able to pick up that new tool. And I'd like to thank my uh, supporters over on Patreon for your continued support. I always save that money that I get from you guys every month, put it aside to be able to buy more tools here on the channel. So now I splurged, I got one of those pressure testers, so now we can test more coolant system on other cars if I have any leaks or anything like that. Anyways, if you liked this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel, it really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumifa Classic. I'll see you soon.